On one winter's night in November of 2019, Mother Shauna Cote was seeing her boys off to their basketball games when all of a sudden four unordered pizza deliveries from four separate pizza stores arrived at her home in Michigan. Freaked out, she remembers thinking to herself, how do they have our rental, new house and work information? You can't just get this stuff in one place. You see, this wasn't the first time this had happened, and earlier on in that very same month, Shauna received more unordered pizzas to her work office, with a note saying the pizza was from Instagram. This happened three more times, all in an attempt to coerce Shauna into giving the people sending the pizzas her Instagram username. She eventually called the local police, who sent her to the state police to handle the issue. Shauna recalls the state trooper telling her nothing illegal was happening and that he couldn't do anything about what was going on. Shauna said, however, this was harassment at the very least and therefore it was illegal. Now left to her own devices though, Shauna eventually found three other people who had shared similar experiences to hers, being harassed in real life for a social media user handle. Over the past decade, online harassment for usernames has only grew as real estate for social media handles has became a rarity. Nowadays on platforms such as Instagram and Twitter, people who didn't necessarily get in on the trend in the early days might not have been able to secure a username they wanted. And so with sites such as OG users selling on rare handles for thousands of dollars, in came a bunch of new cyber criminals threatening and harassing unsuspected people for exactly that. Uber rides or taxis called to your address at 3am, unordered food deliveries to your front door, and in more serious cases, swatting incidents are all tactics used at the disposal of online criminals, all looking for your rare social media handles. Swatting for anyone who isn't familiar with the phrase has been around since the early 2000s and has grew infamous with internet culture. It's a harassment tactic of either calling the police or calling emergency services to bring the police to a particular address when no real emergency or threat exists. Normally the call would take place on some sort of burner phone with a voice changer and the caller says something extreme like they're holding someone hostage or they've just killed someone so the SWAT team gets sent out. Swatting is an extremely dangerous practice though. One well documented case would be that of Andrew Finch, a 28 year old who died in 2017 after he was fatally shot by law enforcement responding to a fake hostage threat in Wichita, Kansas. Andrew Finch however had been an innocent party caught in the crossfire of an online argument on Call of Duty. Two gamers, Casey Viner and Shane Gaskill, had fell out over a $1.50 wager in the game after a friendly fire incident. They then took to Twitter where an argument ensued about the loss. Casey threatened to swat Shane and then Shane gave an address to Casey and told him, I'll be waiting. The property given, however, was Shane's old address. He was evicted from there the previous year. Casey still went through with this plot though and contacted a third party, Tyler Barris, to place the call. Using a voiceover IP, Tyler placed the call and told local police that a hostage situation was taking place involving his family members after he had just fatally shot his own father. Officers responding would arrive at Shane's old address where Andrew Finch was now residing and due to responding officers not being the trained SWAT team, they didn't know how to handle a hostage situation so they eventually opened fire, killing Andrew. The swatting case making national headlines, a defendant in California sent sentenced to 20 years in prison for making phony 911 calls across the country. One of those calls leading to the deadly police shooting of an innocent man about 1,400 miles away. Here's ABC's Will Carr. Tonight, the man behind this prank 911 call I have shot him in the head and he's not breathing anymore. Sentenced today to 20 years behind bars after pleading guilty for a swatting prank that turned deadly. I already poured gasoline all over the house. I might just set it on fire. Tyler Barris has admitted to swatting, calling authorities and triggering SWAT teams across the country to surround the homes of unwitting victims. Walk this way! In 2017, Barris thought he was swatting the home of a video game rival after a fight over a bet for a dollar and fifty cents. 
but police swarmed Andrew Finch's home, an innocent man with no connection to the game. He was shot and killed by police who thought he was reaching for a gun. There are no words to express. The top is taken. Finch's family now wants the police department held accountable, while prosecutors in Kansas hope Barris's stiff sentence sends the message that swatting is no game. It's not a joke to swat other people. Swatting is a growing problem across the country. It can be a federal crime with a max penalty of life behind bars. Cecilia. Okay, Will, thank you. In March of 2007, then 47-year-old Mark Herring joined Twitter for the very first time. He was tech-savvy and was ahead of the game, so when he joined the site and at Tennessee was available for use, Mark snatched it up. He chose Tennessee because he loved the Volunteers, the University of Tennessee's football team. What he didn't know, however, was that in the years to come, criminals would be seeking usernames for a profit. Over the years, Mark's family recall him being contacted by many users, looking to legally purchase the handle off him. But because of the rarity, Mark would never budge. So when he received a call on the 27th of April 2020 and someone demanded he hand the handle over or face repercussions, he told them no, probably thinking it was an empty threat on the caller's part. But sadly for Mark, he would be wrong. At some point later on that same day, various pizzas were sent to different addresses intended for Mark. They showed up at his daughter's home, his sister's home, and the mother of his children's home. But after all three tried to contact Mark to see why he had ordered pizzas to the house, they didn't receive a response. Facebook messages were then sent trying to figure out what was going on, but again, after no reply, they took it upon themselves to contact one another to see if they'd been able to get in touch with Mark. All three came up with the same answer, no. They had initially thought that it was some kind of playful prank on Mark's part, but his son-in-law Greg had a gut feeling something wasn't right about this situation at all. And when he reached out to Mark's girlfriend, she confirmed exactly that. I'm in the back of a cop car, I gotta go, was the response that Greg got from Mark's girlfriend. New tonight, it's called swatting. It is a growing problem across the country. The term refers to a hoax 911 call with the goal of diverting emergency resources to an unsuspecting person's home. On News 2 at 4, we told you about a victim who found himself in the middle of a swatting call after he refused to give up his Twitter handle. He was part of a nationwide crime spree targeting people with rare usernames worth thousands of dollars. News 2's Alex Dennis explains how minors are suspected of orchestrating the entire scheme that ended with a local man dead. After Mark had denied handing the handle over to the caller, someone from the United Kingdom called up local police where Mark lived and told them, I shot a female in the back of the head. She's dead. The caller then told operators that he would use pipe bombs placed at the front and back doors if police would respond. When police would go on to ask this caller where the property was, he gave them Mark's address. The details had been provided by a person known as Shane Sonderman, who had gave the details out in a Discord group just moments before the call was placed. Within minutes, officers arrived at the scene. With guns drawn, they called for Mark to walk towards them, keeping his hands visible. As he did so, Mark appeared to lose balance and fell to the ground. He was unresponsive. He would go on to be rushed to a local hospital and died as the result of a heart attack. This was determined to be the result of armed police officers attending the scene. Shane Sonderman would go on to be arrested weeks later in May of 2020, and after an investigation by the FBI, he was found to be at the head of similar attacks going from July of 2018 all the way through to May of 2020. One of the victims in one of the attacks was none other than Sean Okote in Michigan. Michigan, who we spoke about at the start of this video. A pattern of behavior was found in all cases. Shane would make contact with the victim for their username, and after they refused to give up the handle, a campaign of harassment ensued. In most cases, it was things such as pizza deliveries and taxi rides, but in two incidents, more serious cases of swatting had taken place. Shane would go on to be charged with fraud, interstate communication of threats, 
false information and hoaxes and conspiracy in May of 2020. And in March of 2021, he pleaded guilty to the conspiracy charge in exchange for the other charges to be dropped. This came as the likely result of Shane being classed as a minor when the offending took place. The British caller, believe it or not, had also came under the investigation of the FBI, but American authorities decided not to press forward with charging and extraditing him due to him also being a minor when the offending took place. Even though Shane pleaded guilty to the charges that were brought against him, prosecutors still pushed for a harsh sentence because Mark had died, even if Shane hadn't directly caused his death. But after begging the judge for mercy due to his age and immaturity, he would go on to receive a five-year jail sentence. His neighbor called and said, there's police everywhere and they, they think a man has killed a woman and he's on your property. You know, you need to take cover. It was shocking news for 60-year-old Mark Herring, who lived here off of a sleepy country road in Bethpage. He went out the house with a gun because he heard someone was on his property and he sees all these cops around him and they ask if he is Mark Herring, put your hands up. So he tosses the gun away from him to show he's not a threat. Hands up. A full response from authorities faced the innocent grandfather who died minutes later. I believe that he was scared to death and that is what caused his heart attack. His family rushed to Sumner Regional Medical Center where they learned more about Herring's final moments. They just kept talking about this 911 call that was placed. It had been a, uh, like a prank phone call or a swatting phone call. Months later, they learned about Shane Sonderman, a minor back in April 2020 when the crime was committed. He was from Tennessee. He's the one that collected all of our information my address, my sisters, my mom's, my other sister, like he put it on a channel on Discord, which is a gaming chat form. The private information released for use in an intimidation tactic meant to convince Herring to hand over his one of a kind Twitter handle at Tennessee. Herring refused. Another minor was in on the scheme. A kid in the United Kingdom made the call to the my dad's local police department. He will not be extradited from the United Kingdom because he is still currently a minor. Right. Sonderman is currently behind bars awaiting trial. A federal grand jury indictment claims he had six victims across the country. Herring was the only one who died. They're not playing the game and they're not thinking it's funny. This is legit extortion. How much money are they selling these handles for? It's like $3,000, $4,000, like pennies compared to a life. The family shares Herring's story now for several reasons. Watch your kids on the internet because they know more than you think they know. And that those guilty of swatting face tougher penalties. You've not just changed that one person's life, you've done a ripple effect and they need to pay for that. Alex Dennis, News 2.